Viewer discretion is advised. Every season we have hypes. We have expectations. We have visions of possibility and promise. In 2020, the XFL gave us eight franchises, but one in particular, the St. Louis franchise. No, we're not talking about the St. Louis Blues or the St. Louis Cardinals. We're talking about the Battle Hawks. And on today's episode of Unhinged, the Dome's going to be rocking this weekend. I'm your host, J Dash. Alongside my partner, Crime. Hey, hey, this is your part man, part machine, all podcaster, Carlos, the wrestling movie guy. Good to be back. Good to talk some hype. And before we get into that, as always, you all know the drill. If you want some kick-ass old school XFL gear from 2001, you know where to go. You got to check out 503 Sports. And when you're at the checkout line, make sure to put in Unhinged, and you will save 10%. Make sure to go check out XFL Newsroom, unless you're already here. If you already are, that is awesome. But if not, go check them out. They're part of the XFL family. We are part of the XFL family, and we love us some XFL Newsroom. If you need your up-to-date XFL news, that is the place to go. And if you want to help support this show, please go to anchor.com and click on support the show. And if you want, you know, just throw us a couple of bucks. You don't have to throw us much, but we very much appreciate it. Anything that you pass down to us will go directly into the show. And speaking about going directly into the show, let's dive right into the big dome, the big rocking dome. What's going down in St. Louis? You can find me in St. Louis. Well, not technically, I am not going to be in no St. Louis. Um, that's a hell of a flight. <laughs> Just um, turn on your VPN and make it think you're there. Yeah. Close uh, enough. I'm looking forward to the game. Uh, apparently, St. Louis is going to have a crowd near 30,000 people. As you listened to the earlier this week's episode, I kind of went on a rant about how attendance numbers are... <laughs> kind of. <laughs> well, that's yeah. putting it very mildly. Well, that's the reason why we have this podcast. Uh because sometimes you got to call shit out. One thing I have to really give props to is the city of St. Louis for welcoming this organization. Their, their promotions, their advertisements, their connection to the community to get this football team into St. Louis and also, you know, hype it up. They're going to have about 30,000 people there. So we won't have in, any inflated numbers like we did see in San Diego in, you know, the AAF or the, the 10,000 people that showed up in Utah for the Stallions. The one thing I know about St. Louis, especially on our Discord at XFL Newsroom, we do have a couple great um, got St. Louis guys there, great fans. And, you know, they, you know, we, we share each other's information. We, you know. See what what's going on, and from what I could tell, St. Louis, once they were given their chance of a team and given the franchise, they have literally hit the floor running, selling the crap out of the team. They get fans in the stands, pretty much giving a big middle finger to the National Football League. Here, here, and well deserved because they got screwed. Yes, not and- once but twice. How do you lose an NFL franchise twice? A couple times. St. Louis. The, the, Cardinals. I yeah. I don't want to bash the city of St. Louis. Uh, they are, you know, they're hyped. We have a couple of great guys on Discord that have come to known to appreciate. I'm not going to bash the city of St. Louis. I just know that I was a little harsh on the Battle Hawks this offseason. I think they're going to be a nice little tough team now. Uh they went toe to toe with Houston last weekend, which made me w- impressed me, especially Jordan Tiamu. If Jordan Tiamu keeps playing like he's playing, um, he is going to be in the NFL somewhere next season, and that's a good sign of a quarterback learning his progressions, getting better, 
and making smart plays. Yes, he threw an interception at the end of the game. Um, he thought it was a free play. If you watch the replay, the defender in Houston was offsides. But, you know, this ain't the New Orleans Saints versus the Los Angeles Rams type of game. And just now thinking of that, that saying L.A. Rams, that is kind of a backstab at St. Louis fans because they are the former St. Louis Rams. But you get my point. Soror Tiamo made a bad play uh, because he thought it was a free play. And usually you're, when you're told if there's a defensive lineman that sets off sides, you want to throw the ball deep because you know you're getting the ball back. Unfortunately, you didn't get the ball back. Um, but one thing I'm looking forward to in this St. Louis game and the hype of the Dome is the city of St. Louis finally showing football can't exist. You know those pundits, you know those naysayers, you know that website from the NBC that says spring, spring league football cannot exist in the United States. Um this Saturday night, or Sunday, I need to find out what actual day it is. I think it's Saturday, if I'm correct. Um, St. Louis gets a chance to show what it's all about. Um, it's the Sunday. Ah, it's a Sunday afternoon game. That's cool. Um, the show the nation what they're all about. Show what St. Louis should be. Honest opinion. I'm just gonna be honest, with truth here. St. Louis should have never lost the Rams. Uh, St. Louis did everything to keep the Rams there. The owner got stingy, knew he was going to get a brand new shiny toy in L.A. in the stadium, and he hauled ass to uh, L.A. Yeah, Stan, uh, Stan Kroenke. He yep. is an absolute prick. He's had a history of doing stuff like that. And if people really want to dig deep into it, Jerry Jones had a lot to do with that. People don't realize how much behind-the-scenes control that man really Jerry has. Jerry Jones is behind a lot of shit. Yeah, go check out uh, Urinating Tree on YouTube. I know, ridiculous name if you haven't heard of him, but that Urinating catch- Tree has done a fantastic job on videos that really expose the dark side of NFL ownership. So go check out Urinating Tree. Excellent, excellent sports channel. Doesn't sound like it at all, but yes, as goofy as that name is, go check well, it out, Urinating it's a, Tree. It's a, it's a gift that keeps on giving. You either get great NFL facts or you get a... Uh, disease <laughs> one way or the um, other especially in cleveland with uh, all unless, the staff infections yeah uh, uh or, or unless you, you, you there's people out there that are into that stuff and that, there's nothing wrong about that it's just not my cup of tea and <laughs> it unless it's in it, your cup of tea <laughs> it keep it out my goddamn cup of tea <laughs> <laughs> but yeah interesting uh interesting youtuber um uh, but he was uh, i don't know i've I seen an episode. He was talking about my Jaguars, uh, about the what went wrong with the Jaguars, and it's actually uh, he brought up some good points, and I I like his product. He's pretty cool, um, but the name is so freaking catchy. That's that's the thing. That's how you sell a product is the damn name. Honestly, uh, makes you wonder why the hell we have our name. Well, okay. <laughs> well, because our previous show we never got any recognition, so people know who on hinges now. I get DMs all the time about how they like us because we're genuine. Yeah, and we appreciate that. Thank yeah, you, guys. Awesome. I, re- I really like. I really appreciate. It's like, hey, we're, we're just two random dudes talking about the XFL, showing our opinions, and we're not following the company line. Yes, sir. We do that. You know, button up my tie and let's go. What no it's company line. Why was I never told? Exactly. <laughs> we're, we're, we're we're not the mothership, so we don't have to follow what they tell us to say. But ah, uh, the mothership. Oh, E bombs world. If you if you get that reference, you're as old as I am. But if not, I'm sure it's lost on a lot of people. Ah, the motherland. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, the show's gone off the rails just now. Let's, let's get back on track. How did it really go off track? You did bring up Jerry Jones and we went to a urinating tree. And I start yelling, ah, the motherland and all that. Like, you know, yeah, it's off the tracks. Before you know it, me and you will be singing along to the Russian national anthem. Da, 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 da. Uh, something, something, Stoli's vodka. I don't know. Stoli's vodka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are definitely going off track. Hey, bartender, give me a Stoli's vodka. Will you like a urinating tree with that? Oh, yes, perfectly. Hell perfect. yeah, I do. Yes. Well, and, 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 yeah, and my glass of tea, all in the same thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but going back to St. Louis. Where barbecue is big there, apparently. Meanwhile, back uh, in Berg. 
and they have a oh, baseball team show. that's yeah. yeah <laughs> All right, enough riffing, enough riffing. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, We're losing uh, subscribers. Yeah, can we talk about something positive about St. Louis besides the football team? Like they, the go like the arch? They make beer. Well, yeah, Anheuser Busch and the Arch. I literally I know this is a little off for XFL talk, but when I was a little kid, I've always thought that McDonald's lost a contract war with some restaurant in St. Louis. That's why there's not an, another arch. I always thought that was an incomplete McDonald's arch there by the Jesus Mississippi. Christ. The and, amount the amount of McDonald's history going off in my mind because I've sucks. actually seen a lot of stuff on Ray Kroc and the founder and all that. <laughs> That's like I could get into a conversation and, about that right now. And you know what's so fucking stupid about that is that my father you know, kept it going for fucking years with me. Oh, that's until, hilarious. Until I was about like, maybe it's like once I started learning American history and I finally found out about the arch. And my dad's like, yeah, I should have told you that when you're like four years old, but I didn't want to. You're, Jesus you're, Christ. I haven't it, brought that up in four years. You're still going on about that. And he, he was like, it's like, I just want to see how far you can bury yourself. And I was like, Oh, thanks dad. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I love your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he's just stepped out of Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah. Tell him uh, to buy Walmart for a blue light special. That's not bad because my sister honestly thought that everything was black and white until color got into TV. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, your dad rules. Sounds yeah. like an asshole. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, my dad's a Master Chief of the United States Navy, retired, so he's gone through some shit. So. When he when when he came home and he saw his kids do that, he'd be like, "Ah, let them be. They're fine. They're not hurting anything. They're not the Russians." Um, <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, uh, I'm gonna definitely get DMs about this. Of like, man, we went down to the freaking like a urinating tree, and we're talking about the color TV and people being black and white. It's, it's yeah, it's amazing. Anyways, let's go back to the St. Louis talk. Uh, the dome's rocking. Uh, what's going on in St. Louis? Barbecue. Um, they're known for their barbecue. They're known for their beer. They're known More for the St. Like Louis beer. Cardinals. Um, they're known for the Cardinals making the playoffs every year. Not winning the World Series every year, but at least making the playoffs every year. So they're consistent with that. Um, I know they, they were very excited about their Blues winning the Stanley Cup last year. Unfortunately, I was not excited. Um, I, I was a Bruins fan, but I'm not, I have no hate. You're St. Louis. We have no rivalry with you guys. Congratulations. Uh I don't really care about hockey, so no. there's that. What your cap Sorry. Uh, you either, you're, your team's either eliminated in the first round or you win the whole thing. Um, the same with your nationals. Mm -hmm. you, um, but why is this episode, you know, the Dome's rocking? When the St. Louis was announced as a, an XFL city, I knew very from that point on that St. Louis – was going to have a rabid fan base. They're going to have fan support like crazy because their social media from the start blew out of the gate like any other team has. They went from like right off the gate there. I think they were right at 5,000, right when the names were the cities were announced. And now they're nearing 100,000 people on social media on their Twitter account. That tells you a lot. How, what does that tell you? They're about 100,000 likes by themselves to have more likes than the CFL. They have more likes on their social media than the International Hockey League. That's AAA hockey or the league rep under the NHL. For Never the heard of them. Or, the I, or it's the minor league type of things. And one thing I find the very, very... You know, promising about the XFL is what I saw in S Seattle last week. It was 45 degrees in Seattle, raining, and they put 29,000 fans in Century Link. And and when I found out, excuse me, Century Link Field, um, what I found out later is that they wanted to open up more sections in that stadium, but they didn't have enough of security personnel or workers on site to allow that. Um, so maybe if Seattle stays in the competition out west, the later games in the season might be a little intriguing when you, for bigger crowds. But one thing I do know about St. Louis 
is that they are just like Seattle. That place is going to be smashed. That place is going to be smanging or smanging. Really? So what the fuck is smanging? Smanging, smanging, smanging. Uh, it's going to be banging. It's going to be loud. It's going to be crazy. And we have little old Missy trash can coming in with the uh, just above a trash can. He's not quite a trash can yet. Matt McGloin and the New York Guardians coming to town. Um, I'm stoked about this game because I believe that St. Louis is going to come out. They're going to show out. They're going to put their best game forward. They're going to press their fans. They're going to go two and one. And I know we don't. We're going to make picks later in the, in the show. But oh my God, this is setting up for a St. Louis welcome to the Eastern Conference a contender game. And I think the New York Guardians get blown out in this game like they did in D.C. Welcome to the Battlehawk Penitentiary. Oh, Jesus. Usos, really? Uso. Hell yeah, man. I love me the Usos. That immediately went in my head when you were like, welcome to St. Louis. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> uh, but the how, from what I have read through articles and what I've seen through YouTube and news sites over the last couple of years, when the Los Angeles Rams departed St. Louis, it destroyed a lot of fans in their hearts. They're like, man, this is my team here in St. Louis. There's no way I'm cheering for the Rams in L.A. How because, could they? Yeah, because they just got their heart tripped out. That's like tell, telling, asking an old-time Cleveland Brown fan to cheer for the Baltimore Ravens. Ugh. Or asking the Baltimore Colts fans, if unfortunately, I don't want to be like a dipshit, if there's still any alive. Uh, cheering for the Indianapolis Colts. Oh, I mean, that happened in 1984. There's definitely fans alive. And oh, the yeah. oh, animosity yeah. is yeah. definitely there. Why did I think it was 1974? Mm -hmm. I don't is know. That... Brain fart. It happens. Am We're thinking... human. We can't possibly remember every single am detail. I... Am I thinking of the WFL again in the 70s? Well, 1974 was a pretty good year. Um, yeah, it was nine years before I was on this planet. So... I have no idea what happened over there. Just what's on the history books. Well, Death Wish debuted. Uh, Kurt, I hope they <laughs> Charles Bronson, one of the biggest actors in the world. I could keep going. Well, that, <laughs> that, well that's your movie side of things kicking in here. Yeah. Well, I'm a um, wrestling movie guy. Can't help it. Uh, but when you look at cities that lose franchises, we see it all over the NFL over the last couple of years. Oakland may not show it yet. But you'll see it in the next couple of years. You're going to see articles. You're going to see stories about the depression of the fans that lived in the Oakland Alameda area that went to Oakland games every single Saturday or every single Sunday when the Raiders were in Oakland. Now the Raiders are um, in Las Vegas. They're officially now the Las Vegas uh, Raiders. Which never um, should have happened either. How could no. you possibly move the Raiders? I mean, yeah, I know they moved from L.A. to Oakland, but you don't move them. Out of California like that. Like, I mean, hell, even moving them to San Diego or something like that yeah. would have been a stretch. But at least, it's still in California. Like, the, Las Vegas, go get your own team. The like, greatest point I've heard about the whole thing, about the Oakland situation, and how the, you know, the Rams with L.A. and the Chargers came up to L.A., I think it was Skip Bayless uh, that's on YouTube. Boo. He He said that the wrong teams got relocated. He said the Chargers should have went to Las Vegas, and the Raiders should have went to uh, L.A. Uh, wow, I'm shocked. For once, I agree with that cowboy homer. Like, and, wow, I'm, I'm shocked that that, that actually didn't if, even occur to me. That's a really if, good if, idea. It would have and, been a great idea. Yeah, and what, what's sad is that I, I did some research. I got to find the article. I will put it on our, uh, our, our Twitter page. I almost said YouTube page, but it might be there, too. Um, I read an article, uh, LA Times wrote, I think it was in 2018, no, 2019, that they were comparing the average attendance of fans for the Chargers in the new stadium in compar comparisons to the other NFL teams. And they're looking at Charger fans, not the actual attendance of the games themselves, because 
As you know, if you watch the Chargers games all this year, ladies and gentlemen, they were majority more of the opposing fans at those games than there were actual Charger fans. Every game was an away game for the Chargers. And the reason why I say that, because Philip Rivers said that. He's like, we're the only team that has 18, uh, 16 road games. So, when you hear about cities being hyped up for their new franchises, and we hear talks about future expansion, we'll get on there here later, that article stunned me. They said they, they, they think that the average amount of Charger fans in that stadium are around about 15,000 people. You know how many people the Wildcats drew last week? Close to 15,000, exactly. if I remember correct. So the, around so, 14 or 15. So last week, not, not the show that came out earlier this week, but the show that we did last week, how I kind of bash out, bash people say that the Wildcats were going to outdraw the, uh, the Chargers. Technically, they did, based on that 2019 article by the LA Times. Um, but switching this to St. Louis, St. Louis Rams, the fans there supported the Rams. They had good, good crowd attendance, good attendance. But that skimpy ass uh, owner of theirs kind of did what a lot of NFL owners do. They kind of self-sabotage the team within, either keeping a GM longer than he's supposed to be there, or doing something that is uh, very common in the NFL, uh, trade players away to lose interest in the team so they can get under that attendance threshold so they can go to the NFL and go, this team's not getting supportive, this is what's going to happen. I need. Can I get approval to move to such city? And it happens. It may not have happened like that in St. Louis, but it happens a lot around the NFL. Happened in Cleveland. Happened in Baltimore. And it's starting. It's starting early signs here in Jacksonville. But what is strange is that it is a business. We understand that. But taking an organization like the Rams out of St. Louis from a fan base that supported that team and a city that is a big sports city. They have two other major professional sports there that draw very well, the Blues and the Cardinals. To take them out of St. Louis, to go to L.A. was more of the biggest motherfucking money grab I've heard from an owner than anything else. Yes, he's getting his nice new shiny toy, which is a stadium in L.A. Whoop-de-doo. You're going to share it with another NFL team. You're now a lesser New York Jets. Good luck with that. The question is, is who is going to be the Jets in L.A.? Will it be the Chargers or the Rams? Uh, but then, Chargers, you, I mean, come on. But if you look at this year's uh, Giants and Jets, they're both comparable. They're both garbage. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, one has multiple Super Bowls through the, uh, through the 90s, well, early 90s, 1990 anyway, and then the 2000s, and then even in the 2010s, he still has Super Bowls like yeah. almost for every decade. And the Jets... They haven't won a title since before Afros were a thing. So, but <laughs> what's odd in the in the modern area of, of sports teams, uh, you know, relocating, especially in Major League Baseball and in the in NBA, teams that are usually world champions don't move; they stay there because in, in the state of Florida, they are, as everyone should know. The Tampa Bay Rays are going to be half the season in Montreal. They're going to be the Montreal Rays. You know what that's telling the people of Tampa Bay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And what is one of the things I've said about the Tampa Bay Vipers over the last couple of uh, two years? Why are you putting a team in Tampa Bay? Because Tampa Bay does not support teams. Yes, they support the Lightning, but that's a 18000 seat arena. You can do that. You got the Bucks, well, But the even Bucks. that attendance is shaky. The Bucks are like the Jaguars and Dolphins. They only go out there if they're doing well, especially if they have home games in September. Jesus, they're not doing well. Their people are not showing up because it's freaking hot outside. Mm-hmm. But St. Louis is a great, great city. Had a dome, had a great nightlife around the stadium. It was good. But that money grab that that owner did to go take you know jump ship and go to L.A. destroyed those fans in L.A. and in, uh, in St. Louis. And St. Louis has been craving craving another football team 
and they got it with the St. Louis Bellhawks, which I still believe is a great is a great pick for the XFL, and they're showing it. They may not have the best team in the XFL, but they got the fan support, which is a good sign. Because if the XFL needs that San Antonio type of team, they got it with St. Louis. And if St. Louis is that team that gets a respectable six and four or five and five, you know, finds a way to get into that postseason game and possibly not going to bash your defenders here. But what happens if they sneak in and, and steal the number one seed in the uh, in the East? That's going to be a hell of a playoff atmosphere in the in the dome. Thirty thousand. I'm pissed. I'm gonna kill him. Nah. Well, actually, I would be quite angry. But yes, no, I would not appreciate that. But that would be interesting. Good for St. Louis. Bad for us. But it's bad for us. But you have to admit, the thirty thousand people we see in Seattle, the thirty thousand people we're going to see in St. Louis, is a good sign of a league. Don't believe yeah. what pro football talk is saying about bad attendance. The attendance will go up again this week with because of the St. Louis team and also Seattle's host in the same time as well. Yes, LA is still questionable, and I'm, I'm just going to give up on the uh, on the Tampa Bay uh, Ge- Geico's over there. Um, the Geico's. <laughs> I Geico's forgot the Geico's. that was a thing. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, I think that this could kind of bring us to topic number two, oh, yeah. which is very close to this, and that is all the expansion team chatter that has been going on. Yeah, and I saw that. that Actually, I think the XFL is perpetuating it because earlier, uh, earlier they they were actually putting out, um, they were putting out, yeah, they were putting out feelers and tweets and whatnot. Holy crap, Vince! No, 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 no! Slow down. We cannot be talking about expansion just yet. This league needs to sustain itself for at least two years before they can even think about that. Yes. And I know the expansion talk is out there, and I've seen people on websites like, what city should we go? Oh, they should go to Birmingham. Oh, they should go to Omaha. Oh, they should go to Albuquerque. Uh, no. 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 Not because of the expansion talk. It's because your cities are not big enough. Why is the XFL succeeding right now or starting to succeed? They're in major markets. I mean, in, that, major, in major markets, you have more people. Well, not only that, but like in order to support those kind of, no offense to those who are listening, possibly Omaha, Birmingham, and whatnot, uh, in order for y'all to survive, there needs to be at least 18 or 20 teams in this league so there's enough revenue sharing to help cover your tab because more than likely, it's going to take a while. Y'all had a team in the AAF. What did you get? What did, what did you show the AF in return? Maybe 7000 a game? Like, maybe that's really stretching it. I just don't see that happening anytime soon. This league needs to be around for a good 10-plus years with at least... Well, no, Birmingham 12, averaged around 15. Did they, did they really? Yeah, like, their, their crowd, uh, that was in okay. inflated numbers. Dude, those numbers were pretty whack, man. I, I don't believe that. Like, I, I saw those games, and those numbers were not very good. Memphis as well, not very good. In fact, actually, Memphis was definitely worse. I don't think that there's enough there to sustain it. And besides, we also saw what happened with the XFL and the Thunderbolts. They love that squad, but as soon as they started stinking, nobody went. And on the one hand, I can't blame them because, well, you know, you want to support a winner, but maybe that's just the DC fan of me out here. Like, I am an absolute diehard. I will watch all the games, but I know that a lot of people around here, once the Reds can start losing, nobody goes. Once the Nats start losing, less and less people go. Caps start losing, less people go. But some cities are like Seattle. I'm most jealous of them. They will show up no matter what. No matter what your record is, they're going to be yeah. there. And I just don't think that any of these smaller cities are going to keep that up. Yeah, so. that's... that's The smaller cities, let's just say, in 10 years' time, if the XFL is still around, then yes. Because the league may have already 12 or 16 teams by then. But, like, you hear all the expansion talks, expansion conversations. Like, cities like San Antonio would be good because they have past history of good numbers that makes sense 
And Orlando, same as that. Yes, Orlando is not a NFL city, but they are in the state of Florida, and they will draw because apparently Orlando draws better than Tampa. But if that happens, that's technically Tampa moving to Orlando. I don't think they'll put another team literally two two miles down the street in Orlando. But you see people like posting like, "Well, oh, the XFL needs to go to eight teams or twelve or we are eight teams." Excuse me. Go to twelve teams and sixteen teams. I just like I don't. If the, if the XFL is going to expand, you can't do a ten team league next year. They can work a schedule out that way. Uh, I don't mind. You don't have to go straight from eight to twelve to sixteen. You can go eight, ten, twelve, sixteen. You know, put the two other teams out there. But the expansion talk that has been you know been, has been brewing now. Is for me real dick. It's ridiculous because we're only two weeks into the season. Yes, everything's positive. The ratings are good. The attendances are good. Uh, if you listen to the right people, <clears throat> us. But, <laughs> but one of the issues I have with expansion is there's a football league that recently folded here in the United States called the Arena Football League. Once upon a time, they were an eight-team league. And then they increased so fast to about 30 teams within like three years. And all of a sudden, it collapsed and it fell upon, it, fell upon itself. Then it you know, was reborn again with eight teams, and it collapsed again. Um, yes, you got to look at it this way. And I'm going to paint the picture. Yes, expansion is nice. I understand people want more football. And I understand that. But is there enough talent out there to fill those other teams? Because if we look at XFL right now, honestly, we might have five teams that are good enough to have are good enough to have players that can get in the NFL. Well, all all the teams do, but it looks like there's teams in, like Defenders, St. Louis. Houston, they have multiple NFL talent players that will see the next level. What happens if you expand this t- league to 10, 12, to 16 teams? The talent pool will start getting smaller. And that's an issue because if you get the talent pool getting smaller and smaller and smaller, the product will get stale. And when the product gets stale, people don't go to the games. People don't buy the products. Then you'll have a 12-team league or a 16-team league start collapsing on itself again, just like European football, just like the Arena Football League. You don't want to get too big too fast because you will fall faster than you got when you grew to that size. If you're going to do an expansion, which same what XFL on Fox or Fox on NXFL is doing, if they do a two-team expansion, or let's just say, hey, we're going out to our expansion teams, here are our new or here are our four next expansion teams, and they won't come until 2022. That's understandable because you still have two years until the teams are there. So those organizations have the same amount of time to build their teams and their organizations like the other original eight teams did. I just don't like how all of a sudden we're just two weeks in the season where just if you honestly, we're a couple of sleeps away from Oh my God! What are the TV ratings going to be in week two? Can this league even sustain the uh, success? And now that the TV ratings have come out for week two, everyone's talking about freaking expansion. Calm your britches. Yes, I do know that Philadelphia, Boston, San Francisco, uh, Detroit, Chicago, Indianapolis, Cleveland, Cincinnati have all have domain names taken out for XFL teams. I understand that. That's all well and good. But you got to remember, those names were released way before the original eight teams were announced, or the eight cities were announced. So that's nothing freaking new. So for the XFL fans on there, I know if you listened to our last episode, I was, you know, gun ho attacking the, the enemy. To my fellow XFL fans, calm down. You're getting too fucking excited. Yes, the XFL's here. We're excited. Week two, week three's coming up. We've been waiting for this time for you know for years, but don't inflate too much where you'll collapse collapse on yourself. Do you want the league to last five years? You grow slowly. You grow too fast, you'll fall on yourself, and 
all this work for none will go away to the wayside. And I hate to break it to you, ladies and gentlemen, there won't be an XFL 3.0. Because if Vince McMahon fails this time around, he's not doing it again. Because the man, yes, he is at his age. You know, he may not even have a chance to relaunch the league. And also, you got to look at the financial backing or fall fail that will fall on him. Unless he grows the league slowly, gets great sponsors, and then the eight teams turn into their own individual franchises, then they actually become a, you know, very, very solid foundation league. Then Vince McMahon is retiring with not just billions of dollars, but trillions of dollars. That's you know, not really trillions, but a lot more money than he is projected to lose actually gains money. That's what your mindset needs to be. I know we're excited about the XFL and what we've been seeing on TV and the product on the field. It's good football. This XFL right here, my opinion, if you put the defenders against the main, uh, the uh, extreme from 2001, I'll take the defenders every single day. I think the defenders are a way better team than the extreme, better coach team. <coughs> I think this XFL has shown to the nation and to the naysayers that spring football can survive can live it's there but i want to caution all of you people if you expand too fast you can ruin your product and once your product gets ruined by you know teams like tampa bay or future cities like birmingham or memphis or st or uh, salt lake that images of complete empty stadiums will start hurting the brand, and that will lead to the end of the XFL. Let's have the XFL for more than just one season this time around. I would like to go through multiple podcasts this offseason talking about player acquisitions and you know updates of the league, looking at the NFL, looking at players and practice squads that make them the XFL. I don't want to be doing this podcast next year hyping up you know other sporting events besides the XFL because we won't be here for that. I know we're excited. Let's just calm down, folks. We're week three. Let's see what week three gets us. Let's see what's going on in St. Louis before we start talking about expansion. Massive well, with, expansion. Well, with that, I think we may as well move on over to our picks because our rambling and bambling and talking and well, pretty much being all over the place. Uh, pretty sure that people are waiting there salivating for what our picks are going to be because so far... We've actually been pretty good with calling these games. Uh, well, actually, I've been pretty good. Hey, I'm above 500, so I'm still playoff bound right now. But yeah, James, you are at seven and one, and yours truly is at five and three. How are you That's playing? Still a pretty bound? good record. I'm How five and three. If it, five, it, hey, five it's so what? That's still a playoff bound. In, in, in a two team league? How's that playoff <laughs> How's there even playoffs in a two-team league? You're either first or you're last, baby. You, there ain't no playoffs here, bro. <laughs> Bite me. I'm coming back. <laughs> I'm going to drag you down. <laughs> anyway, Houston, Tampa Bay, who you got? Uh, do I really have to pick the Roy Houston Roughnecks and the Tampa Bay Geckos? Hey, i got to um, ask. That's the point of it. Uh, <laughs> can you name me the starting quarterback for Tampa? I'll wait. Uh, maybe a mid, maybe they'll trade for Matt McCloy. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, whatever. Give me uh, Houston on this one. I don't. Uh, people are Tampa Bay fans on the social media are trying to hype up this game like they have a chance in this one. You guys don't have a quarterback. Aaron Murray could be out. Cornelius is eh, and Quentin Flowers is blah. Um, you guys are in big trouble. You. Tampa Bay week three, you guys are in. I hate to say it. I don't want to do this, but you got to press the panic button. You guys start 0-3. Um, you might have to start saying goodbye to the season. Run the football for the love of God. Run the football. Y'all bread and butter is right there. Patrick actually started to show out. Had a few flashes of like a... Like a Mike Allstott. I wanted to say like Jim Brown, but I mean, come on now. There is no other. There's only one Jim Brown. But he was having some nice flashes of um, Mike Allstott. Like just boom. Patrick was just 
running into people and knocking them over. He averaged 5.2 yards on 14 carries, and he had 73 total yards. That man played damn well. That may not sound like a lot, but uh, nah, that dude was a huge difference maker. As the game went on, Patrick started to come into his own. It's just unfortunate that the rest of the team were unable to do that. But, yeah, got to go with Houston on this one. Definitely Houston. And I just, I don't know if there's a whole lot more we can say about this game other than Houston's going to win this. That's for sure. So the second game on the slate, Dallas at Seattle. Um, Saturday night, kind of prime time. It'll be dark here on the East Coast. Um, But this is actually a very, very interesting game. And the reason why I say that is both teams are 1-1. Dallas got their first win in L.A. Seattle beat Tampa Bay. Um, Both teams struggled in their first wins, but Week three, and it's an early division clash. The winner of this will hold their hold will actually hold sole possession of second place in the conference. And this comes down to me picking on who's the better quarterback in this situation. Yes, Brandon Silver shows some spots that he is still struggling, but trying to get used to the offense. Landry Jones had a very sluggish beginning against LA, but turned out to have a great second half especially with Cameron Aris Payne, the running back. For this, for me, I know Seattle had a great show out at home last last week. They're going to have a good show out again this week. It's going to be loud in Saint, uh, uh, Saint, uh, no, Seattle. Um, but I just see the same type of uh, outcome like I did in L.A. Dallas is going to, you know, it's going to be struggling early in the game, but Dallas with the better quarterback will win the game at the end. Uh, I like Dallas in this one, and a close one, just like last week's game in L.A. Give me Dallas. Uh, mm, this is kind of a tough call for me because I really like the way that Seattle's run game was going. Again, I'm, I'm like a record. Get Establish the run, establish the run. Farrow, 45 yards, average 4.5. Gardner, not as good, you know, took the ball 10 times, 27 yards, average 2.7. That's just not great. But Williams, he got 45 on 11 touches and average 4.1. Like, you add all that up, that's, that's about, you know, damn near close to 100 yards right there. I'm terrible with math, so I'm not even going to begin to try to count that up right now. But if they can fully establish the run, the Dragons, and Silvers can throw – couple touchdowns without turning the ball over and have some decent completion percentage they actually got a good shot of winning this but i may have to go with the renegades here because putting up over 300 yards in a in a supposed off game where i still got questions about landry but i think that the upside to landry jones is a bit too much for seattle's defense so i think i got dallas winning this one as well all right so the next game on the slate is the game in St. Louis, New York, and the St. Louis Battlehawks. Uh, <laughs> this one's easy, too. <laughs> Battlehawks. I got Battlehawks winning. This is going to be so loud in there, and I don't see the Guardians figuring out their quarterback situation. Well, technically, the Guardians do have a chance here. Like in every football game, the other opposing team will have a chance, no matter what, what's going on in the locker room or what type of idiot quarterback they have controlling it, controlling the helm. Any given Sunday, there's there's uh, truth to that. If Matt McGloin hands off the ball more than he passes, uh, there could be a great chance of New York winning this game, and there is a chance that will happen. New York does have a good defense. Problem is their offense doesn't do anything. So with that in that in mind, I think St. Louis blows them out of the water. Uh, Jesus, no, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh man, is he really going to make an argument for him? Uh, I can't no, wait to hear it. Oh, that was a team. I'm trying to make an argument. It's like you know, a politician trying to argue about something that they're definitely not going to fix, even though they're asking you for your vote. You know damn well it's not going to change your life. But fix my damn plumbing. 
Um, that's more of your utility company than an actual politician, but okay. Not that kind of plumbing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just don't. Uh, St. Louis is. Uh, yeah, I think St. Uh, New York's going there with Bud Saul. St. Louis is going to win big, and St. Louis would be two and one. One and zero in the East, and they'll be technically tied with the defenders if the defenders do slip up in their game. In which that is the next game on the slate. The Washington Defenders 2-0 and traveling to the Los Angeles Wildcats 0-2. Unlike Tampa, LA is 0-2, but they, are, they don't have that many problems as Tampa because they got their quarterback, and they actually look like a halfway decent team, unlike Tampa. Um... Yes, LA. If LA loses this game, which they might, they'll be zero and three. Are they pressing the panic button? No, they should not. They they're not Tampa. Tampa needs to press the panic button because they have nothing else to, uh, you know, count on. Uh, but what is big about this game on Sunday night is that the Washington Defenders just came off of a shutout performance of the New York Dragons, or excuse me, the New York Guardians. I don't know why I keep saying dragons. Now, <laughs> if the now if the New York Dragons were still existing, their arena football team, I guarantee you they would have put some points up on the defenders. And Aaron Garcia, who is a famous arena football quarterback, number eight, by the way, I have his jersey. Um, I get, even though I think he's like in his almost early fifties right now or late forties, he's still better than the trash that's right there in the quarterback right now in New York. But anyways, if it was the Dragons in St. Louis. That type of game, you know, New York Dragons and St. Louis Bowhawks, I'm that might be a closer competitive game, even with the arena football rules. But DC blanked the Guardians last week. Now they're going to LA. LA played Dallas pretty well, and they played Houston very up in a very well to a point. There's just one thing I don't like about LA right now. I still can't figure out that freaking head coach. Why are you just chilling on the bench, bro? You're the head coach. I know you're talking about defensive plays, but you sit on the bench on live TV, getting interviewed by the guys upstairs, just tells me one thing, that you really don't care that you're there. Yeah, I've never seen anything like that. A coach yeah. sitting on the bench. Yeah. Like, uh, wow. That <laughs> kind of left me flabbergasted when I saw that. I was like... It, it, I guess maybe this has possibly happened before. I didn't know what to make of it. Yeah, it, it's exactly how I felt too watching it. I'm like, I just I think he, like I said in the last show or last podcast from last week, I don't think he is ready to be a head coach. <laughs> too late. And, and I, I got a message on Twitter, you know, keyboard warriors out there that said, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. And I just literally sent him a screenshot of that image and sent to him. I was like, yeah, my case is closed. Um, I honestly think this is coming from me. Besides Bob Stoops, I think Pep Hamilton's the best head coach in the XFL. Um, as not being homer for D.C., and it's not because you're a D.C. Uh, fan. I'm just, how he's coached the last two games, he is, my opinion, he has made adjustments in both games he's coached. Uh, and he's made put Cardell in situations that make him win his game. It's if it, if this is going to go down to who the better quarterback is, it's not. It's going to be no competition between us because Josh Johnson, I think, is better than Cardell Jones. Um, you just don't. You just you can't tell you because he's just getting back from his injuries. Um, but one thing about this game that is going to be key is the return of Anthony Johnson. Anthony Johnson is the guy who got traded to the D.C. Defenders last week because of the debacle that happened in Houston. Um, and Rashad Ross, who is taking this game personal. Uh, I do believe the Houston, uh, not Houston game. I do LA. believe that L.A., they're, fi- they're starting to find themselves. They're starting to. I just think they're going up against the best team in the league. And yes, I know Houston has a lot of a fo- offensive firepower and, and, P- and Philip Walker. DC has a better defense, and they have a more organized. They have a good offense. You, you don't have to win the champ. You don't, win the championships. You don't need a great offense. You need a good defense. 
And D.C., in my opinion, has the best defense in the league. They have a good offense. I just think that their defense is going to contain Josh Johnson, is going to contain Nelson Spruce, um, and Elijah Hood. I just think that the three-headed running back monster in D.C. is too much, and Rashad Ross is becoming the deep threat that Cardell needs. And Cardell has not shot himself in the foot like other quarterbacks have in the XFL. Give me D.C. by score. It's gonna be a good. It's gonna be a good game, but the score at the end of the game is not going to be the measuring stick of how dominant DC will win this game. So I like DC. Uh, if they want to tell me about a score prediction, about like maybe 27-18, 27-19, but it's gonna be more like twenty-seven ten most of the game. I think DC will control it from the get-go, and LA catches up at the end to make the score reasonable, but. Give me DC. Yeah, same here. I feel like this is probably the most on paper predictable week that we've had so far. Definitely got DC winning this, but I think that Josh Johnson might actually show out because a lot of people were saying, man, he didn't play very well. I'm like, really? I mean, yeah, I know he overthrew a few balls. I know there were some passes that he probably wishes he could have had back. But the guy still had over 50% completion percentage, nearly 200 yards, two touchdowns, zero turnovers, and a passer rating of nearly 90. Like, not spectacular, but pretty damn solid. And oh, yeah. that bomb that he threw at the uh, towards the end of the game was an absolute perfect pass. And if he could do more of that, then L.A. definitely has a fighting chance. But Elijah Hood needs to start stepping it up. I, I don't think that he's played as well as I expected him to because so many people are pumping him up. And I think he's averaging maybe 3.2 yards a carry through two weeks, and that's just not going to cut it. But D.C., as I said in the last podcast, they have the best defense, a damn solid offense, and the special teams that is also pretty good too. Let's not forget that they blocked a punt for a touchdown. They have set themselves up a good field position with excellent punting and field goals. Uh, I really like the way the D.C. is looking. Not trying to be a homer as usual, although I love being the homer. But they're probably going to win this game. The only downside for D.C. right now, though, will be that jet lag. That's, That's going to be pretty tough. But I think that Anthony Johnson's feud with the head coach of L.A., is going to make things interesting. And Josh Johnson, maybe subconsciously, even though it's not the Redskins, will want to go after D.C. simply because it is a D.C. team and he can maybe you know stick it back to the city that let him go, even though technically the Redskins play in Maryland, which still drives me insane, and Landover. But I think there's going to be some interesting side stories in this game. But probably 24-12, to 12, D.C. Going to go with that one. No, those yeah. are definitely, uh, th- I, th- I think that's probably how it's going to go. Uh, that's that's a, an easy score. And that's mm-hmm. a reasonable score. Um, one thing we've noticed so far, there's not going to be a lot of big blowouts in this league yet until offices finally get their groove. Now I think you'll start seeing offices getting their groove starting week three, week four, uh, because we don't have a preseason in the XFL. We had scrimmages, but scrimmages are not, preseason games and that's not you know having the time to get your offense in sync um but with that uh we can ramble on for another couple of hours we can talk about that tea and the, and, you know, the leaking tree that you're just talking about and the vodka and the russians like we went on our little show there earlier <laughs> um you mean but, the hindenburg train wreck yeah no yeah. That, that was interesting <laughs> yeah. um but Besides from that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please visit XFLnewsroom.com and go check out all the other podcasts in our network, uh, American Noise, uh, The Guard Post, uh, This Is XFL Show, and the This Week in the XFL Show uh, with the ref, and This Is the XFL Podcast, and also, of course, us at XFLnewsroom.com. Also, come join our Discord at XFLnewsroom slash Discord. Um, but aside from that, uh, let's get ready for week three. Uh, it's going to be some entertaining games. Uh, we'll drop two more podcasts next week as usual. Hopefully we don't have any more stupid pro football talk BS to talk about. <laughs> Actually, if anything, I would love it because it keeps things interesting around That's here. That's true. Um, and don't forget, guys, 
don't forget to check out 503 Sports. One of there are one glorious sponsor. We thank them very much for all the free gear that they have sent to us. And if you want some cool XFL gear from 2001, go check them out. Type in Unhinged at the checkout line. Save yourself 10% off. And if you want to help support this show, please go to anchor.com. Look up XFL Unhinged. And we really appreciate any and all help you'd like to uh, provide us. And anything you pass to us will go directly into the show for better equipment, better sound, all that hoopla. Back to you, James. That is for sure. We will love free money. Um, but we're, again, we're not the other sites. We're not going to ask for the money as a subscription fee. We're free. That's awesome. Just help us if you want to. We're not asking you to do it. Anyways, uh, besides from that, we can go on for hours. Um, yeah, uh, let's get ready for week three. We'll see you guys on Monday. Hopefully we get some Tron Hawkins interview. We try to get him this week. Uh, unfortunately couldn't get him. Uh, he was kind of busy. So we'll try and get him with uh, Tron Hawkins from this is XFL podcast. Uh, to discuss some XFL questions about the league. Um, of, of course, XFL Newsroom. Anyways, um, I'm calling that to the day, folks. Enjoy your Friday night. Enjoy this week in the XFL. We'll see you on Monday. Hasta luego, guys. Peace.